A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Deeper News Update for Thursday, May 19. Barbados' renewable energy transition is getting a whopping $25 million investment over the next year. Today, representatives from the Ministry of Energy and Business Development, the Barbados Workers' Union and AmeriCaribbean Inc. signed a memorandum of understanding paving the way for the initiative. The partners are invested in a 10-megawatt solar voltaic farm on some 32 acres of land at Mangrove St. Philip. Chief Operating Officer of AmeriCaribbean Dave McGregor praised the partnership as he stressed that Barbados must ditch fossil fuels. We need to get off fossil fuel, we need to stop spending our hard-earned foreign exchange on fossil fuel. The money's coming in and it's going straight out the other door on fossil fuel. That's why we need to be doing projects like this and that's why we need to be doing projects like this with pace. And pace has been missing. I Energy and Business Development Minister Kerry Simmons says the partnership is an example for future private sector investment. It is unprecedented. We have here an investment exercise which is involving the workers of this country as stakeholders. It is involving capital um, and distinguished capital, might I add, in the energy sector. And it is involving also the state enterprise in energy. This, I don't think it has been said, but this is going to be an expenditure that we anticipate to go somewhere in the vicinity of two and a half million dollars. Sorry, 25 million dollars, I beg your pardon. And it is vitally important for us to recognize that the journey that we are now on aligns completely with that which the um, government of Barbados has sought to articulate in its national energy policy. The national energy policy is very clear that we want to democratize the energy sector in Barbados. General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Tony Moore, said with the island transitioning from fossil fuel to renewable forms of energy, she expects that new jobs will be created for Barbadians. We are interested in well as a, in a just transition and as part of that just transition is not just making sure that people who have jobs today will have jobs tomorrow, but that people are alive and well and can flourish in a sustainable environment that would provide sustainable jobs and therefore sustainable opportunities for them and their children. Therefore, delivering on the mission of the Barbados Workers Union to improve the well-being of all and maybe we can revise that to improve the entire, the entire well-being of the person. One of the island's oldest private schools is closing its doors. After 128 years of operations, the Ursuline Convent School, located at Colomarock St. Michael, announced today that it will end operations in August next year. The school explained it was facing a number of challenges. And the pandemic compounded the challenges we were already facing. Ursuline sisters in the Caribbean are few in number and are aging. We can no longer continue to provide the necessary leadership and there are no replacements to come from outside. Moreover, in recent years, we have noted a significant decline in the enrollment to the point where the school is no longer financially viable. Therefore, the Ursuline sisters in the Caribbean have taken the painful and hard decision after consultation with experts and dialogue with the Ministry of Education and the Bishop to end our educational service here in Barbados by August 2023. We will not be admitting any new students for September 2022. Environmental challenges have disrupted classes at the Lawrence Teague School. Officials from the Barbados Union of Teachers visited the Spooners Hill St. Michael School today, where there have been complaints of a foul order. Beauty General Secretary Herbert Giddens spoke to Barbados today. Teachers have been experiencing some gaseous smells, um, experiencing headaches. They have foul odor, itchy skin, burning sensation in the throat and so on. These, and these are complaints which are similar 
from what would have would have happened uh, before. Um, we would have first um, heard that there were challenges from Friday. Obviously, there were disruptions um, during the course of this week. Um, school, the block, one block, had to be closed off yesterday, and this this is affecting. This is affecting. Um, this is affecting the classes two, three, and four. We understand over 150 students, and that block since the closing, that block would have had to go home. So um, today, we understand this morning that officials from the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Environment uh, visited the school, and investigations have started. Leading tourism official Rudy Grant is moving on from the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association after six years at the helm. The BHT announced that Grant will leave at the end of June to pursue other career opportunities. Grant said his experience at the BHTA was rewarding and fulfilling. The diversity in our membership and the varying issues which the CEO is required to focus on has made every day exciting. COVID-19 has negatively impacted the tourism industry and has complicated how we function. However, the immensely long hours and numerous intense meetings have provided invaluable knowledge and experience, which I would not trade for anything. One of the lessons for me from COVID-19 is that through collaboration and partnership, respecting and facilitating varying views, demonstrating the knowledge to compromise and having the determination to succeed, we can overcome whatever obstacles confront us. In the latest COVID-19 update, a 64-year-old man succumbed to the virus today. He was fully vaccinated. His death has brought the number of casualties from the virus to 436. Meanwhile, 371 new COVID-19 cases, 164 males and 207 females were recorded on Wednesday. From the 1,362 tests carried out by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 102 were under the age of 18 and 269 were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 89, while 4,134 are in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure oxygen, natural spring water, infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news, the Agri-Investment Forum opened in Guyana today with CARICOM leaders pledging to remove trade barriers to achieve food security and reduce the region's food import bill. It was the chairman of CARICOM, Mr. John Brasenio, who is also the Prime Minister of Belize, who really emphasized that these trade barriers among CARICOM member states need to be removed. As a CARICOM region, we must do better to remove those technical barriers to trade that most of us impose on each other. Let us instead use our efforts and energies to adapt policies to support the growth of the agro-productive sector, improve market facilitation, and develop intra-regional transportation. Now these trade barriers include non-tariff barriers such as quotas and embargoes that constrain the export and trade of agri-produce within CARICOM member states. And Mr. Brasenio was not the only CARICOM head of government who acknowledged these concerns and spoke about addressing the challenges of trade barriers. We need to move from rhetoric to firm decisions for the advancement of the region's agricultural sector achieving food sovereignty and food security. We must also resolve to act urgently in our own interests, including by honoring the terms of the Caribbean Treaty and not permitting breaches of it by 
let's say countries said from time to time impose these illegal non-tariff barriers. In Barbados, we have a responsibility also to be more agile with respect to those things that we do to allow goods into our own territory from the region, as we will expect every other territory in the Caribbean community so to do. Because if we don't make the steps now to remove the barriers, God knows how we can create the productive base that President Ali has so, so masterfully drafted for us in terms of the plans to expand productivity and to expand production. On the international scene in India, seven people have been killed in the state of Assam as severe flooding in the northeast of the country forced half a million people to flee their homes. Hasina Begum has a few light moments with her family as they scrape by with basic supplies in this relief camp. They left their village when it was flooded and now share a room with 20 people. She says they had to wait four days before being given some food. They left all their belongings at home and don't know when they can return. We go through the same thing every one or two years. We lose all our belongings. We have to work hard again and rebuild everything, only to lose them again to floods. This is our life. Heavy rains continue to lash Assam state, impacting half a million people. Many have left. Some waded through rising waters, others used rafts. Floods have devastated hundreds of villages. The Brahmaputra is one of the longest rivers in the world and main source of water for this region. It often floods during monsoon. What's concerning is that the rains have come early and are more intense for this time of year. In many parts of the state, this river is flowing above danger levels. Rescue efforts are underway. At least 50,000 people are in relief camps, while military helicopters are dropping basic supplies for the thousands still stranded. Landslides have blocked major roads and rail links, cutting off some of the worst hit areas in southern Assam. The water level keeps rising every day. The people here are in difficult situation. There are concerns about food, water and shelter. We are not getting the kind of relief that is needed. Weather forecasters expect heavy rains to continue over the next few days, causing more damage and challenging rescue efforts. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.